Do you mind? I'm meeting someone. I... Oh. Oh. You mean I'm supposed to be meeting you. Nothing, it's just... I thought you'd be taller. Anyway, let's not get hung up on that. The Phoenix is a wanted man and the board has eyes everywhere in Byzantium. Yeah, that's my codename for... You know, our mutual friend. Oh. I'm Golden Eagle. Um, yeah. I named you Cuckoo. It makes sense if you think about it, because I didn't know who you were, and Old Earth Cuckoos would routinely trick other birds into feeding them. That doesn't even make... Fine. Fine. Can we pick our own code names? I want to be... Rolling Thunder. Wait, no, I got it. Dropkick Millstone! Yeah! I was really trying to stick with the bird theme. How about... Bullfinch? Wow! That is so much better! Bullfinch Millstone! Okay, but adding your last name kind of misses the point. Anyway, you're looking to make contact with Minister... Uh, Magpie, right? I should warn you, it won't be easy. He spends most of his time in this estate which is heavily guarded. I've always been fascinated by birds. If you ever research Earth species, there are thousands of them. So colorful and distinct. The other thing about birds, though, is their environmental indicators. Exactly. I started thinking about everything we see around Halcyon, and all the things we don't see. For starters, you rarely come across anyone living in Byzantium who wasn't born here, even though we get ships in all the time. Doesn't that seem strange to you? And then there's the way nothing gets fixed. There used to be a suggestion box around here. People would drop ideas in. Nothing ever came of them, of course. Sounds like my old job. I had all these bang-up ideas, you know? Like making everybody haul their own damn boxes. Never did catch on, though. That's what I mean. Everyone needs a suggestion box so they can voice their thoughts. So what if nothing changes? Sure, that part is. That's why they install shredders in those boxes, after all. But one day, the shredder broke. No one came to fix it. And since it wasn't working, we didn't have anywhere to file our complaints. So you can imagine how messy things got. At first, management put up an out-of-order sign, but that just seemed to worry people, like they were advertising something wasn't working. Why would the Golden City need suggestions for improvement? It's really so people can feel heard. Everyone's got something to complain about, you know? They eventually took the whole suggestion box sign down so that people didn't have any expectations about it. But they never fixed it, never replaced it. Doesn't that seem odd to you? Except that's not how they go. At least that's not how they're supposed to go in Byzantium. The whole episode made me wonder, if they can't fix something as simple as a suggestion box, what else aren't they fixing? After a while, I got connected with our mutual friend and started using my position here to feed him information when I could. That's it, really. Whoa, I'm not one of your B and E specialists. I just provide intelligence. Some of the guards hang around Billingsley's house of inebriation between shifts. Maybe you could do some reconnaissance there. You know, swipe a key while nobody's looking. Just remember, you didn't hear it from me. Afraid not. He almost never leaves his home and his guards never leave him. Good hunting, Golden Eagle.
Wouldn't it be something? Anti Creos. Stand back, you. I'm part of Minister Clark's personal detail, and that means you gotta keep five feet back at all times. Of course not. <laughs> but I'm not on the job right now. The others took me out to celebrate on account of me just getting hired and all. He's basically the most important person in the colony, which makes me the most important guard in the colony. <laughs> yeah. That means I got a key to the minister's estate, my own personal UDL assist issued shotgun. <laughs> they don't give those out to just anyone. Yeah, I've nearly made it to the top, my friend. I'm just two promotions away from on-the-job bathroom breaks. That's a great idea! I'll have a Spectrum Vodka. Here's to me! <laughs> hey, you are really great. Have I told you that? We should be friends. <laughs> wow, listen to me, I'm soaked. <laughs> I should probably slow down before I'm face down on the tile somewhere. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I could, I could have another. You got another? That's not every day you get your dream job, right? Wow. You've got, like, this crazy energy. Has anyone ever told you that? You're like a, a manosaur. You got a manosaur energy. Oh, laws. I gotta stop. I'm seeing at least two of you. I really shouldn't. I'll have the worst hangover tomorrow if I don't stop. You sure sound like you know what you're talking about. Okay, here goes. Yeah. Was that one supposed to taste like purple berry crunch? Or am I just tasting breakfast? I don't feel so good. I think I'm gonna be sick. What feel? Serving an instrument of corporate supremacy? Oh, I wouldn't know. I've given up my days of being a cog in the machine of oppression. Something's telling me I'm being mocked right now. I've given that up as well, Mr. Millstone. Oh, there. That's one right there. Can't you just see the stench of impropriety radiating off of her? Ah. If it isn't my favorite vagrant in the system, what can I do for you? Of course I am. Now I know for certain that this is the pinnacle. There's nowhere more beautiful and no lifestyle more luxurious. I deserve the very best our society has to offer. I earned it, and thanks to you, I know that I have it. Wouldn't you rest easier too in my position?
Why would I waste energy being upset over deaths I didn't even know about? And why would the board waste resources on those who aren't productive? Now, do we have any further business, or are you just here for the repartee? This property is off limits. Solicitors, loiterers, and uninvited visitors will be fined to the fullest extent of company policy. This ultimatum brought to you by Universal Defense Logistics. Less funny? The Minister isn't expecting visitors, and you don't much look like one of those couriers from HPS. Hmm. Looks like your papers are in order. All right, go on through. How did you get in here? You! You're not one of my guards. What are you doing here? I don't know if I trust this so-called Minister fella, if that is his real name. Minister Clark, what a remarkable honor it is to meet you. If this is about another Aetherwave clip or radio spot, you may kindly fuck off, as the parlance goes. I'm not doing any more. Slowly and loudly, Aloysius, that's the only way these morons understand anything. I said, you may tell Charles to go fuck himself. Oh, terribly sorry. I thought you were part of Rockwell's PR team. But if you're not, that means you're a dissident? A real, live dissident? Finally! High time we got the recognition we deserve. And so affable. Why, you're nothing like the crazed hooligans the board loves to caricature. But what are you doing here? And how did you get in? My friend, the slightest demonstration of independent thought or action renders one a dissident in the board's rather expansive definition of the term, which is why I'm dying to know what brought you here. Drugs, of course. What else? Why did I get my hopes up? Back to idiot speak. I don't have any drugs. You should try a vending machine or a purveyor of curative goods. What is this system coming to when even the Earth Minister is disillusioned beyond hope? Will that be all then? Oh dear, I don't think I can say this any more slowly. Unless... Of course, of course! It's Rockwell again, who else? And I thought he was only holding me here to keep me out of the way. You are a quick study, indeed. I've long suspected Rockwell of transacting business in my name. But this proves it. So the chairman's a crook who can't be trusted? Who knew? Please! This is important. Whatever it is that brought you here, Rockwell's the one behind it. How should I know? I've been under house arrest for years. But there is a way to find out, and perhaps to set things right. Whatever Rockwell's doing, he'll be doing it from the HHC headquarters. Your best lead is to look for details in his office. If by look for details, he means knock things about and take what we like, count me in. That's certainly one way of doing things. Far be it from me to dictate your methods. Captain, we must investigate Rockwell. An injustice like this cannot go unchecked. 
Indeed, it cannot. I can't overstate the urgency of the matter. Why, this is starting to sound like an issue of Dissident Hunter. Are you not? We're talking about busting into the chairman's office here. We're discussing industrial espionage, legal redress, the possible salvation of Halcyon. Is this not exhilarating? Also, this is the longest conversation I've had with someone else in quite some time. I dearly hope I'm not imagining this. Now we've got to get into the HHC. That's in the Acropolis District, along with the other major corporate and government facilities. But only board employees are allowed into the district. There's a heavily guarded checkpoint just down the street. There might be a route through the maintenance tunnels, but I'm afraid I don't know specifics. Most people avoid the area for obvious reasons. Well, you won't have much human company down there. Plenty of sprats and auto mechanicals, though. When you reach the HHC building, this access card should get you up to the executive suites, where the chairman's office and what used to be my office are. The board's lackeys are none too bright. I simply claimed I'd lost it and hid it somewhere no one would think to look. I merely hid it in a book. No one reads anything longer than a few pages around here. Obviously, the chairman surrounds himself with the cream of Byzantium's elite. There are a few advantages to dealing with imbeciles. Wait! Rockwell has one of the only terminals capable of transmitting to the Earthbound message drone. This is our chance. Please, take this and transmit it from his office. Rockwell hasn't given me any messages from Earth for years. He's desperate to keep me out of contact with the Earth Directorate. But they need to know what's happening here. Why indeed, I know so little about you, much less your motivations. But I'm afraid I don't have many options, confined as I am. Besides, I've nothing to lose. If you're looking into Rockwell, I can only hope you're also looking out for Halcyon. What isn't on it is the real question. I've gathered meeting minutes, internal messages, sustainability reports, and more, all exposing the corruption and mismanagement plaguing Halcyon. Once the rest of the Earth Directorate sees it, they'll have to send help. Putting your faith in the inherent goodness of mankind? The Earth Directorate is our best hope. Even Rockwell's resources are no match. And it is hardly in their interest to let Halcyon crash. Depending on the nature of their response, months at least, perhaps years. Organizing and sending personnel all the way out here is no mean feat. Perhaps there is hope after all. And now I entrust it to you. Good luck, and trust no one in the Acropolis District. The Acropolis District is off limits. Move along. What in the law's name are you on about? Honest mistake. Why don't you come back another time and we can take this from the top?
Yeah, and I'd really like a new Hammersmith grenade launcher. Hammersmith, the most trusted brand in brutality. But we can't all have what we want. And seeing as you don't seem the executive sort, you obviously don't belong in the Acropolis district. Hey, I've been trying to get a post at the HHC, but they keep turning me down on account of my odious interpersonal skills. Or something. You get paid by the word, Officer Windbag? As a matter of fact, I get paid per profile, you marginally employed 20-something male with more guts than sense. Anyway, I've worked here long enough to know every clerk by name and face. And since I don't know yours, you ain't getting through. As I recall, you were saying something about being tired and needing a breather. Sure. Let me just take that off your hands. Did I say restricted area? Slip of the tongue. What I meant was, welcome to the Acropolis District. Bortz has shown off. Just act like we belong. Do we really need all the security? I have to go through three checkpoints just to take a bathroom break. Can't be too careful. Dissidents like Phineas Wells will stop at nothing to ruin this colony. Hell, I even heard a rumor that Celeste Jolliker was recently uncovered as a dissident. But couldn't they concentrate the security outside the building so we can get some work done? Why are you so bothered by having a few guards around? I think I'm gonna have to speak to your supervisor about these dissonant leanings of yours. Wait, that's not what I meant. Chairman Rockwell. Most of the day-to-day -day business goes through the adjutant. To be a cop. <laughs> Most of the day-to-day -day business goes through the adjutant, Sophia Akane. Always plenty of filing to be I hear Minister Clark's moving his office into his residence. A poor man does nothing but work. State your business. Please step away. This entry is for high priority HHC business only. If you're not clear to know, then I'm definitely not clear to tell you. Yeah, and I need a new flavor of Tyleritos. Chairman Rockwell is away on business. And even if you were here, you need to request an application for an appointment. How should I know? No one ever gets an appointment with the chairman. Huh. I didn't realize we were still using those iridescent stickers. But this looks right. I'll just need you to register your weapons with a revised request to carry 32B form. Each weapon will need a separate form. Now, well, let's see. Damn it. When did I run out of forms? I was gonna suggest that myself. Look, you don't have time to wait on new forms, and I can't afford the citations for impeding HAC business. So I'm gonna save us both some trouble and waive your forms. Just know there are a bunch of guards upstairs, and they're all high on dervish mist and low on patience. So try anything funny, and they'll paint the walls with your guts. Don't worry, boss, I got a plan. First, we get ourselves some tossball sticks, right? Then we sidle up to him all polite-like. If you'll forgive my saying so, that outfit looks splendid on you. Personal assistant to Adjutant Akande and Chairman Rockwell. 
I'm also responsible for organizing the adjutant's stationery, which is more of a hobby. Ah! Oh, you were being serious. I'm obliged to inform you that Chairman Rockwell is unavailable for an indeterminate duration. Will there be anything else? Excuse me, just a moment. Is there something I can do for you? I beg your pardon, Minister Clark's former office is currently closed to solicitors. I suppose that is admissible. Please try not to break anything. Look at this fancy office. German's bleeding the whole colony dry. was crooked, but this? This is just evil. Well, that was some quite distressing information. There's something weighing on my mind. If I still believed in the grand plan, a revelation like this would have seriously shaken my faith. Knowing you, I can only assume you have already begun formulating a plan to deal with this. So tell me, what are we going to do? Yes, of course. And when you do, you can count on me to back your play. Your ability to get out of tight situations virtually undetected hasn't failed us so far. Anything you'd like to discuss? Yeah, boss?
You see any sprats loose up here? Definitely don't touch them. Stay out of sight. Let the record show that Subject 23K's cause of death is cerebral vascular incident brought about by a ruptured aneurysm. That's an 86% failure rate for this batch. I think we can safely move on to the next. And I had such high hopes. No visitors allowed, citizen. I'm gonna need to see some identification. should probably go before someone else catches you and makes a fuss about it. Keep your eyes out for dissidents. What? Hey, you! This area is for authorized personnel only. You're not supposed to be here, are you?
I guess that's what I was wondering. As a matter of fa- Oh. Right, now I'm with you. My turn. How about you go, all right? It would be bad if one of my colleagues found you here. Crew members Ellie and Max are engaged in a heated discussion in the kitchen. Max. Maximilian. Vicar. Vicky. Yes? Aw, this is no fun anymore. Something on your mind? Please. Something busted, Captain? You have a message from Adjutant Sophia Akande. No one ever looks quite the same in person as they do in my reports. And my reports of you have been exceptionally thorough. You've had quite a career. I think you're being modest. I've been keeping up with you ever since Emerald Vale. Now that was an interesting piece of work. A rundown backwater. Barely worth the ink on a map. Until you showed up. You walked through Edgewater and in your wake transformed it from a loyal company town to a haven for dissidents. I'm actually a little impressed. All this happened because some mysterious stranger fell out of the sky. Not always. 
For the longest time, I could never be sure if you were on our side or against us. You should be back on the Hope, frozen in a hibernation chamber. Yet here you are, flying about in a stolen ship, leaving a trail of paperwork in your wake. The board doesn't know what to make of you. But I do. I've seen your potential. There's so much we can do for this colony. You haven't exactly been keeping it a secret. We raised security on the Hope after Wells broke in. As for discovering the identity of the missing colonist, all we had to do was scan the passenger manifest. You have something I want. I'd like to negotiate. There's exactly one vessel in all of Byzantium that looks like it dropped out of an Aether Wave drama. Phineas Wells is wanted by the board. I want to convince you to turn him in to us. He has a litany of charges against him. Vandalism, illegal experimentation, sedition. I could go on. Wells is a dangerous madman. His plan is going to endanger everyone in Halcyon. He's an obsessive psychopath. And he's using you. You're in contact with Wells. I want you to send us a tracing signal from his communication terminal. Wells was our mistake. We failed to apprehend him for years. I'm asking you to help me correct that mistake. I'm sending you my access code. Contact me from Wells' terminal. When you're done, come speak to me in my office. Adjutant Akande's call has been terminated. Will there be anything else, Captain? We've arrived at Phineas's orbital lab.
know. I've suspected as much for years. Of course, I don't expect the board to do a thing about it. They've been driving our colony to the brink of destruction for decades. The board's mismanagement put our colony on the road to collapse. If we don't put a stop to them, thousands of colonists are going to die. Hold on. Uh, let me see if I understand this correctly. You're saying that Halcyon's on the brink of total collapse? And the Chairman's plan to save all of us is to save himself? I always knew Halcyon was heading toward a system's collapse, but I never imagined we were already there. The board made this crisis, and now they want to solve it by freezing the rest of us? That's not a plan. That's a goddamn escape clause. Do you realize what this means for the Hope? For your fellow colonists? The board's going to kill them all. Toss them out into space, just to make room in their hibernation chambers. Short of lining up every member of the board and shooting them in the back of the head. Do you know what's waiting for us on the Hope? Scientists, engineers, artists, the brightest minds Earth ever sent us, uncorrupted by the board. The board's going to dispose of them all and transform the Hope into a prison for the rest of us. They're likely on their way to the Hope as we speak. We need to get to those colonists before the board. I have enough chemicals to start reviving a few of them, but no easy way to get them off the Hope. Merciful gibbering law! You're a genius! We bring the Hope to us. Skip the entire ship across the distance of colony space, right next to my lab. Exactly. You're a step ahead of me, but I perceive the shape of your plan. If we link up the Hope to the Unreliable, then use your navigational computer to calculate a reasonably safe vector, we can skip the entire colony ship into the rings of Terra 2. And that's going to work, without killing us in the process. I thought intrasystem micro-jumps were prohibited for a reason. Yes, yes, there's always a risk of a catastrophic collision between the Hope and, say, Terra 2, in theory. But you'll be fine, provided your calculations are correct. You'll need to switch on the Hope's auxiliary power using the Unreliable. Then, head to the bridge. Your navigational computer, Ada, should be able to activate the Hope's skip drive. Once you've skipped the Hope next to my lab, I'll have easy access to the frozen colonists. I can start reviving them immediately. Certainly. How can I help? Unlikely. The Hope is as massive as the Groundbreaker, but compared to the Rings of Terra 2, positively minuscule. The board might notice, possibly, depending on the position of their heads relative to the depth of their collective posteriors. <laughs> Skip drives were never designed to be used within a system, but I skipped my ship across Halcyon when I rescued you, and that turned out fine, mostly. That is, I ruined my ship and nearly killed myself in the process, but the maneuver was well within acceptable margins of risk. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. It wouldn't surprise me. When I pulled you out of the Hope, the board nearly intercepted me. I expect they stepped up security since my little act of larceny. I know you're wondering why I'm doing all this. Why I believe the people on the Hope are the answer to the colony's problems. The Hope is carrying some of humanity's most brilliant thinkers. Scientists, engineers, experts in their field. If we work together, we can still find a way to save Halcyon. The board would have us believe Halcyon is beyond saving. I choose to believe otherwise. If there's even the slightest chance we can save Halcyon from oblivion, then we have to take it.
certainly. How can I help? I won't wish you luck on the hope. Can't rely on luck. Rigorous calculations and sound logic. That's the ticket. What's on your mind? You absolutely should. The adjutant must have sent you some kind of tracking code. If you don't use the code, she'll suspect you betrayed her. I think you should use the code and send a corrupted tracking signal. That should buy me some time. The enemy is bound to discover my hideout sooner or later. I'm prepared for that eventuality. This is just my way of buying myself a little time. Use my communications terminal to corrupt the tracking signal. While the board busies themselves trying to decipher it, I'll have plenty of time to prepare my defenses. Didn't I request no more fertilizer shipments be brought on board? Who keeps ordering these? Captain, you have a message from Adjutant Sophia Akande. I'm impressed, Captain. I almost expected you wouldn't go through with it. Unfortunately, Dr. Wells found a way to corrupt the signal before we could pinpoint his location. Still, it's only a matter of time before we find him. Come visit me in Byzantium. We need to have a talk about the future of this colony. Because I'm not in the business of arresting my own allies. You have my word. Meet me in my office. I've authorized your ship at my personal landing pad. Adjutant Akande has ended her call. Rather rudely, if I might say, considering she didn't sign off. Will there be anything else, Captain?
We'll be here, Captain. Captain? Not so fast. All right, you're clear. The adjutant's expecting you. Go on through. I admit, part of me expected you to stand by your old friend. For better or worse, Wells was responsible for putting you back on your feet. That said, he's also a wanted criminal. For information regarding his whereabouts, you are entitled to collect a reward from Percival. The signal you sent us is experiencing some interference. My agents will need time to isolate the problem. We're going to monitor Wells until we're ready to make a move. I asked you here to discuss something far more important. I understand you've infiltrated the Ministry. The things you discovered there must have been shocking, even disturbing. Halcyon is on the verge of a total systems collapse. The truth is ugly and difficult to accept, but we must accept the truth before we can move forward. Malnutrition is already a problem. Disease will come next, followed by starvation, followed by a breakdown of society, followed by extinction. I know this must come as a surprise to you. I imagine you have questions. Is that why we were suffering plague in Edgewater? Malnutrition? All those folks sick and dying and you knew why the whole time? Yes, Miss Holcomb, we knew why. We've known for some time that Edgewater was dying. The colony itself is dying. The suffering you experienced in Edgewater, the disease, the starvation, will soon spread across Halcyon unless we act. What's in this for you? There's gotta be an angle. There always is for people like you. I appreciate your skepticism, Dr. Fenhill. But I'm not doing this for any personal gain. My angle is the preservation of our colony by any means possible. Nothing more and nothing less. I won't pretend the truth isn't damning. Yes, the colony is on the verge of collapse, but there is a way to save it. We need to talk about Emerald Vale. You handed Edgewater over to a band of dissidents. I can't have this. Adelaide McDevitt and her people have no place in the Halcyon that is to come. Edgewater needs to go. I want you to wipe the town out. No survivors. I get that you board types are all about efficiency, but isn't this a bit much? I'm asking your captain to amputate a rotting limb from the colony. I'd expect you to understand, Dr. Fenhill. You're a monster. Someone has to be. Now is not the time for half measures, Captain. I need a decision from you. You replace a loyal, if hard-headed, town leader with a revolutionary. Adelaide's people have turned Edgewater into a hub of dissidents. These people are dangerous. 
They're going to become more dangerous after the collapse. We need to put them down. Now. The dissidents currently occupying Edgewater answer to no one. They're an unknown, unpredictable variable, and I can't have that. I'm not asking you to be a murderer. I'm asking you to be a surgeon. Edgewater is a necrotic limb on the body of the colony. It must be severed. Don't fool yourself. The dissidents occupying Edgewater are rebels harboring dangerous and seditious ideas. Left to their own devices, their numbers will grow. Graham Bryant and his merry band of morons caused enough trouble on Monarch. I won't risk the same thing happening in Edgewater. No. Allowing thousands of colonists to starve to death because we couldn't make one cold-blooded decision is insane. What I'm suggesting is absolutely logical. You talk less like a human than mechanicals I've known. I am responsible for every single human life in this colony. Do you imagine I relish the thought of killing some of them to save the rest? Steal your spine, Captain. Do what needs to be done. Don't make this more difficult than it needs to be, Captain. I rather like you, and I'd hate to have you shot for disobeying a direct order. I'm disappointed. I was so sure you had potential. Hear the... can take a hint. Mom? Huh? Their mistake. <laughs> 
Everyone all right? Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship.